In this video, I'll be showing off various examples of uh, PowerShell inside GitHub Actions. So uh, I've created a repository on GitHub that have a bunch of uh, sample YAML files, and they do various things with uh, PowerShell scripts. I always find it kind of hard to find examples for this kind of thing, so I thought I'd put together something where you can go and reference this stuff and put it into your GitHub Actions. So on this uh, repository, you'll find these examples right now. Um, and we're just going to kind of step through how each one of them work and uh, see what the output of that looks like. So first of all, I have this script. It has several parameters that we can pass in that cause it to behave in different ways. It also accesses an environment variable and then prints out PS version table at the end. So our first script is a continuous integration script. Uh, or CI script, which you typically run on every um, pull request or push, and that's what I have set up here. So um, on push or pull, it's going to run my script. Uh, I'm running this on Ubuntu latest. I'm checking out the um, source control, uh, or the, the repository to the worker agent, and then I am going to run this script. So it's running script.ps1 in the PWSH shell. So on Ubuntu, I've got to say PWSH and not PowerShell. So if you go look at the uh, output to that, what you're going to see is it's simply just running this script and um, it's printing out PS version table. You can see I'm running on Linux and I'm running PowerShell 7.2.2. Uh, and you'll notice whenever it's a CI, you can see it says it pushed and then it's going to have the commit uh, hash here. So. Um, let's look at environment variables. So to pass an environment variable into a script, what you're going to do is use the environment block here and then define your variables underneath it. On the left-hand side is the variable name and then the right-hand side is the value. So that's a good way to you know adjust how the script runs. Um, and if we go look at the uh, script.ps1 here, I didn't mean to go there. Um, you'll see that I'm accessing that environment variable here um, via the ENV um, scope. So uh, what that looks like is it's just going to print out that environment variable's value when the script runs, and you can see that I'm, I'm getting hello world and then followed by that uh, PS version table. Uh, next we have exit codes. So exit codes are something you don't typically see in PowerShell scripts directly. You may get exit codes when executing other processes that return non-zero values. Uh, in this case, I have a parameter for my script, which is a switch parameter exit code. And then in here, if that is specified, it's going to do exit 5. So it's going to return a non-zero exit code. And what that looks like inside my action is that I get a failure. So it got a non-zero exit code, and you can see that the process completed with exit code 1. So PowerShell returned 1 because uh, I returned a non-zero exit code. Uh, the other way to cause failures is kind of a more PowerShell-y way. So I'm passing in the fail switch parameter here, and that is actually throwing an exception from PowerShell. And since this is a terminating exception, PowerShell is going to return a non-zero exit code. And that's going to look a little different in GitHub Actions. You're actually going to see the error in your script. So you can actually see which line this happened on and everything. It's kind of like a PowerShell-specific you know, output. Um, and the process still exits so with uh, exit code 1, so that means the uh, build will fail. All right, um, inline code. So if you don't want to call a script, you can actually just put the PowerShell script directly into your GitHub YAML. Um, and I'm just calling write host here and pwsh. And what that is going to look like is you'll actually see the script that was run. Um, you can see that's right here, run write host, followed by the output of the script. Uh, next we have installing modules. So um, this is actually using a inline script as well, a multi-line inline script. And it is trusting the PS gallery. Then it's installing the uh, universal module. And then finally it's uh, listing the module after it's been installed. So if you have multiple steps, you can put this in one of your um, first steps to install the module and then uh, use that in later steps. So that's kind of what we do uh, for Universal. We'll install things like Pester or Plat, uh, PS and that kind of thing. So what you're going to see in this script is, again, you can kind of see the script that was run by expanding this. And then you can see that um, my Universal module was installed to this agent. Uh, 
next we'll look at getting a list of installed modules. So I'm just calling get module list available. This is just handy as like a reference because they actually have a bunch of modules pre-installed inside um, GitHub agents. And you can see on this Ubuntu agent, we have Markdown PS, the whole Microsoft Graph module, Pester, and PS Script Analyzer, along with kind of the built-in modules. So um, yeah, those are all available for you to uh, use inside without having to call install module on um, those. All right, uh, manual execution. Um, this is kind of how I set up most of these YAML files, but the way you do manual execution is you actually use this workflow dispatch um, on value here, and uh, that allows you to just kind of execute the script on demand. So anywhere that is defined, you will see a run workflow button here, and you can actually select the branch you want to run it on and then click uh, run workflow, and it'll manually run that. Um, so I could do that here, and then it's just gonna start running that workflow. Sometimes you gotta refresh the page before that pops up, but that will run now. Uh, and you'll notice that in my CI, I didn't actually have man uh, workflow dispatch on here, so I don't have the option to run this one manually. All right, uh, multi-line, we actually saw an example of this already. Um, this is just kind of a multi-line script um, that you just need to use this pipe at the beginning, and that allows you to um, write multiple lines underneath that. You just have to make sure that you keep the indent and indentation the same um, in order to run those multiple commands. Uh, passing in parameters, we've also seen this. So you can just pass parameters directly into the script as you would um, any other PowerShell script. So I'm passing parameter one into here, and if we go look at my script.ps1, um, it accepts parameter one and it just prints that out. So you'll just see um, that value actually shown in the output of this uh, script here. So I just passed in high, and you can kind of see that is what I ran there. And it prints high, and then PS version table. All right, um, secrets. So secrets are actually defined either in the repository or you know kind of your organization wide that kind of thing. Um, and this is how you reference a secret inside um, your YAML files. You can set the secret value into an environment variable and then use that environment variable inside your script. So I have this my variable that I'm accessing my script again. So this is what I printed out previously, but I had set that value myself. Now I'm getting it from a secret. And where you set secrets is actually in uh, settings, secrets, actions, and you can actually set uh, secrets here. So I have set this my variable secret here. And um, what I'm actually going to do is, if you recall, this script is just going to print it out. But what you'll notice when you actually run a script and you print out a secret, um, GitHub Actions is smart enough not to print that out. So it's just actually going to um, mask that with these three little dots. So that's where my secret would have been printed out, but uh, it actually will not print it out. Um, but you can um, pass it to, you know, things like if you're authenticating against um, the PowerShell gallery and publishing a module, you could pass this, uh, this could be your NuGet um, API key that you could be passing to the script. And it won't print it out, so that's good. All right, and finally, running Windows PowerShell. Uh, this is my only example where I actually run Windows. Um, this one's running Windows, and rather than um, PWSH here, you can use PWSH, but I'm using Windows PowerShell in this case by just uh, stay, saying PowerShell here. And this is gonna run my script and print PS version table, and now you'll notice that um, inside this example, um, PS version table has printed out uh, Windows PowerShell 5.1. So uh, you can use either 7.2 or 5.1 on Windows machines, and obviously just um, PowerShell 7.2 on Linux machines. So uh, this gallery or this repository is available up on GitHub. So feel free to uh, navigate over there. If you have more examples, I'm definitely open to pull requests. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you want more content like this.